You're listening to Active Vegetarian, episode 75. Hello, friends. Hello. Thank you for joining us once again. Or if you are a new listener, thank you. Thank you for checking us out. And we're excited that you're finding podcasts like this because maybe this is something new in your life and you want to learn more about it. So congrats to you for being open and we hope that we can encourage you and motivate you, inspire you and give you some value and some good information to help you on this path if that's the journey you want to take. I'm Susanna. And I'm Nikki. And today we will answer another question from one of our listeners. So what is the question? It is something that comes up quite often, actually, whether it is from a listener like yourself or at events that we're hosting or workshops through emails from our clients and our members of our AV coaching, it it quite often starts to come up. So I think there's a lot of you out there that are going to find some value in listening. Okay, to get it. to it, Nikki. What is our so, question? <laughs> Speaking of rambling, rambling, yes. Question oh. is... What can I do when my family refuses to eat plant-based? I can barely prep and cook one meal plan, but making two is impossible. Any tips for getting picky family members to change their eating when they love meat? Whoa, that is a tough one. Yes. It's common. Very common. I think we have to understand that when we change our lifestyle, and it doesn't matter what it is, if it's our eating habits, or maybe we are introducing exercise all of a sudden, or maybe we know that we need to get more sleep and we are changing our sleeping patterns, things are changing Mm -hmm. in our lives. It doesn't just affect us, it affects the people around us as well right? Especially our spouse, our partners, our children. If we live with our parents, it might affect them as well. So if there's any of you youngsters listening to it, please understand that those changes are not going to be affecting just yourself, but also the people in your life. And it goes, those could be positive changes, but you know, we have to understand that not everybody will see it that way. And we are no island. Nobody's an island. We are all connected and those changes and different habits and different patterns are going to ripple and they will be affecting other people. So why do you believe it is that the people that are surrounding us, when we do start to make these changes and that ripple effect starts to happen, why can there be some resistance from those loved ones or parents, partners, whatever, Mm -hmm. that might be affected by this why is a resistance to it i'll be getting a little bit in a psychology but that that's okay just because you know just because we might see that the change is a positive change sure we are doing something good for mm-hmm. ourselves and we possibly are doing something even good for our families by introducing a healthier diet Change is exciting, but it's also super scary and Mm -hmm. uncomfortable. And a lot of the times, it the people in our lives, especially our spouses, I think it's it's one of the biggest ones. They will start to feel like we're gonna transform into somebody they will no longer recognize. Oh, who is this person? Like they used to enjoy French fries Mm -hmm. and hamburger, and all of a sudden they are not eating it. What is going on and how far is this change going to take them? So maybe they might have that fear of losing that sense of connection or familiarity or relating to one another. Mm -hmm. And I think definitely connection when it comes to it, we find connection through food and things like that, especially. So changing those habits could, could hinder that a little bit. So there's a resistance from them, right? Also, it could bring up some insecurities that they might be feeling themselves because they probably know that eating French fries and hamburgers, I'm giving that as an example, or eating chips or eating unhealthy junk food is not good for them. But they do Mm -hmm. not maybe have that power yet, I'm going to say yet, to change those habits themselves. But if they see somebody else doing it, it brings up some uncomfortable feelings some insecurities so they are going to react to it and they're going to react in a negative way because they're not at that point yet to encourage themselves to motivate themselves to have the willpower and do it so what's a new plant-based eater supposed to do in this scenario are you supposed to force a whole food plant-based diet on your family your partner your children everybody else are you supposed to cook 10 different meals in order to please everybody 
The answer is no and no. It does not have to be this complicated. And what we're gonna suggest today will hopefully showcase that it doesn't really have to be, be this way and that you can continue your journey. You can continue making the choices that you know are of value to yourself and of benefit to you and still be including everybody around you and hopefully influencing them to make some healthier choices as well. Well, believe or not, the situation where you know you are in a family where people are not embracing this journey is not uncommon. I think mm-hmm. many people who make that decision, especially if they do make that decision themselves, um, are going to encounter some of this resistance. And we are speaking from experience. Uh, personally, when I first started this journey, I lived in a family. I was a teenager and I lived in a family of meat eaters like my parents would honestly not consider a meal to be meal unless there was some kind of animal protein on the plate and you're not the only one i think this is going to address some of the questions that you have asked us because of the culture and Mm -hmm. you know being european and it's part of the culture and that's something that's come up before with people as well that you know the wonderful thing that today we are living in a in a world where it's changing very quickly and the plant based uh, lifestyle is booming and I know we often talk about it so but I know that some of you are still living in places in, where plant based eating is not mm-hmm. that popular or in a family where there is a lot of resistance so I can tell you from experience that it's totally possible if if it was possible for me to do it like 25 years ago in Eastern Europe, it will be possible for you. And then later on in life, I actually did marry a guy who was a total carnivore. He loved his Wendy's burger and his fries. And, you know, we managed to do it. He was very supportive, I have to say that, of my crazy hippie plant-based adventure. But not all the time he was willing to eat vegetables. There were times where I had to cook a couple different separate meals. So let's get into those tips. As we promised, we are going to give you something that you can take away and that you can actually apply in your own life. All right, so the number one tip is to make meals that work both ways. And what we mean by that is that ultimately, everybody's diet should be pretty much the same. When you look at a plate, it should consist of some type of vegetables, preferably raw vegetables. You can have some cooked vegetables as well. It should have some kind of whole grain. It should have some healthy, preferably plant-based fats, because we know today that animal fats are really, really unhealthy, especially when they're cooked. And on top of that, you have your protein. So the protein is really Mm -hmm. where the change is. If you're a plant-based eater, you're going to focus on plant-based proteins. If you live in a family of carnivores, you will have some kind of animal-based protein on the plate. But other than that, the rest of the plate will be the same. So think about meals that you can prepare that are not going to be extra work. They are not going to cause you to be cooking totally two separate meals. And something like that, like, let's think of, let's say, a curry. Okay, so you're making a Thai curry dish. Everything will be the same until the point you're adding the protein. So you're cooking that one pan Mm -hmm. of everything, like the vegetables, you're putting some, let's say, coconut milk in there, you're putting all your spices in there, and when it comes time to put the protein portion in there, you basically divide it into two different dishes and you put your chickpeas in one of them. You can be very happy with that and you already cooked some chicken, let's say, on the side and you just put it in there. So you're not really making two separate meals. Mm -hmm. It feels kind of weird talking about cooking meat, doesn't it? It does. It sure does. We definitely don't promote cooking meat. Or endorse meat eating, obviously, you know, when a plant based eating is our is our focus however we do understand that everybody is on a different part of this journey and a different part of this path but our belief truly is that if everybody did start to eat more veggies and started to implement this type of lifestyle then definitely ourselves as humans uh the animals the environment the world the planet planet, everything would be in a much more positive place. So we do obviously encourage that and that's where we're at. So it is kind of weird, but we are, we understand. Again, we don't want to preach. We don't want to judge anybody out there. If you are still eating meat and you're listening to this, that's amazing. And we do 
obviously encourage you to keep eating more plant-based along this way and don't judge yourself either wherever you are at on this path that's great okay thanks for jumping in i there, know Nick. i totally I went talking on. about cooking chicken and <laughs> I, I was getting a little uh sweaty in here but anyways make meals that work both ways and you know what we can talk about it in a little bit more depth but we actually have a full article to go along with this podcast and we give you some examples of different meals that you can prepare uh, in this fashion and there's recipes to go along with that to give you even options of what you can do for plant-based protein and what you can do for um, meat-based protein and this approach of cooking um, one meal and you know, adjusting it to the carnivores and to the plant-based eaters works really well for any pasta dishes. Mm -hmm. So think about making like, let's say spaghetti squash, you know, you cook a spaghetti squash, you cook your sauce to go along with that, and then you just alter the kind of protein that goes Mm -hmm. along with it. And if your family is not crazy about spaghetti squash, well, then just substitute it with some kind of healthy pasta. Like they make so many different pastas these days. Kind of like beans and lentils, things like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, definitely. Stir fries work really well for this approach or even soups. Like think about having like a nice broccoli soup. And, you know, as a plant-based eater, you can put some nutritional yeast to add some mm-hmm. cheesy flavor. Um, but for the meat eaters in your family, you can just um, put normal cheese and you can put some maybe bacon pieces into the soup again not encouraging that but it is an option definitely let's move on to number two embrace easy and healthy side dishes so i think like everybody whenever we eat 90 percent of our meals should be based around plants and we should be including vegetables in that so creating two to three different side dishes, whether it's asparagus, baked potato, a salad, you kind of get the picture. Dips are great. Yeah, that's uh, as well. So some dips like hummus or guacamole, any salsas. So creating these side dishes, like two to three side dishes. And then again, just choosing whatever protein source you want to bring in there for yourself as a plant-based eater, and then bringing in something for the carnivores. So some plant-based protein ideas are lentils, beans, mushrooms, spinach kale hemp seeds green peas and carnivore proteins would be chicken fish ground turkey eggs cheese again we're no experts in this area but i'm sure you get the idea so side dishes i think that's a great option and it's really actually not that time consuming to prepare a Mm -hmm. few different side dishes and then create your protein sources i think for any of the parents out there who are listening to it i would say do not give up on your kids because you know sometimes you say well my kids really don't like green beans and so i'm not cooking green beans but maybe try to prepare them in a different way yeah because kids are funny this way you know or cauliflower is a perfect example some kids are like ew i'm not gonna eat cauliflower but then you make it into like a mashed cauliflower and you make it look like mashed potatoes you can put some cheese on top of it kids will change their mind very quickly so just don't give up on it and just be more creative with those side dishes i have to say my mom mastered this creative point and getting us to eat broccoli and cauliflower what she used to do and like it was not vegan obviously but she would create a cheese sauce and i remember Mm. as a kid i loved it so it was broccoli and cauliflower with this nice creamy like cheese sauce that she would make from scratch and put on it so something like that there's lots of great vegan cheese sauces out there and actually they usually have a lot of nutritional yeast in them so Mm -hmm. it's a great way to start to get that protein even into your kids if you're concerned that they're not getting enough so there's so many options that we can play with so embrace easy and quick side dishes as Nikki said, works really well for salads or any quinoa or rice dishes mm-hmm. like salads. Again, quinoa salads are wonderful for this. Any dips and roasted vegetables. Number three, use two separate pans. Now, that I know. sounds like cooking two different meals at the same time, Nikki. It definitely does. But please hear us out. So it's kind of like referencing when you were talking about the curry at the beginning where you can just add in the chicken and add in whatever the protein source will be at the end. It's kind of similar, but a little bit different. So say, let's use shepherd's pie as an example. If you're going to create a shepherd's pie, you know that the basics of the vegetable medley and the mashed potatoes are going to be the same. It's really just the protein source you need to switch. So you can make 
those parts of the meal completely vegan and then you can prepare your say lentils if you're going to make it a lentil version of a shepherd's pie you can create the lentils and you can create the ground beef or whatever type of protein source you want to use for the meat eaters and just create two different pans and lay it out in two different casserole dishes and put them in the oven and bake them and that's it's just an idea, but there's lots of other dishes you can do the same thing with. Like you were saying with the curry, you can cook a whole big pot of curry, divide it up and add some chicken in there. I think when it comes to this, I think the longest thing, and if you've been plant-based for a while and you have been preparing and trying to do these meals for those meat eaters in your family, then you come to understand that really the time consuming thing is cooking the animal-based protein because it really like for us to choose protein and to throw protein in there it doesn't take much it's either using some beans even throwing some hemp hearts some green peas whatever it might be i find our sources are so easy and it's Mm -hmm. so simple and it's actually really quick and convenient it's when you're waiting for the cooking of some uh, animal-based protein really i think a lot of the times what what happens is don't make is you know, when people say, well, I cannot get my family on board of the plant-based lifestyle, is that that the family really does not like healthy foods. Mm. So that's where the challenge comes from, right? It's not necessarily that we are making now a couple different meals and we are just altering the protein source. There might be a time where people are like, no way, I'm not eating mm-hmm. the the shepherd's pie or I'm not eating this veggie curry. It's not happening. Even if you put chicken in there, I'm not going to eat it. So I would just say, just be very gentle and just take your time. And you know, don't change everything right away. No. Don't change everything overnight. But definitely doing a couple of different dishes at the same time works quite well. And the only thing, it doesn't really take extra time. The only thing that you will have to do is clear, clean a couple of different that's true yes yes that's true the next tip we have for you is tip number four and that's one of our favorites and that's have fun with build your own meals Mm. build your own meals are awesome if you've been plant-based eater for a while i'm sure that you've heard of this they are called buddha bowls nourish bowls hippie bowls gratitude bowls basically what it is it's one bowl and you put all kinds of ingredients into it mix it up and enjoy it so this is a build your own meal and basically what you do you cook several different or prepare i should say several different ingredients and that might sound intimidating what i now have to prepare a lot of different ingredients but hear me out a lot of these are raw ingredients. It's basically vegetables being chopped. Mm-hmm. So you have tomatoes, you have chopped peppers, you have defrosted green peas, you can uh, do seeds, nuts, yes, uh, raisins, goji berries, and then of course your source of protein. So you can choose, I don't know, stir fried chicken, you can choose. I always say chickpea, but let's say tempeh you can put into it. You can have some cooked lentils. You can be very creative. Let's just put it that way. And you can create tons of different combinations, which is really beautiful. And what do you do after you prepare all this beauty? You just put it on your kitchen counter and everybody goes there with a bowl and they just choose whatever they want and they just put it in a bowl. And maybe you have a couple of different dressings or just maybe apple Mm -hmm. cider vinegar with Uh, some healthy hemp oil and they just pour it over top or you can make a cheese sauce if you really wish guacamole works really well and then you create your own bowl and everybody can be pleased in the family even those picky eaters choosing what they want i think there's power in that being able to choose whatever you want to put on your plate and I think even taking to the extent of creating tacos or creating fajitas, wraps out of these things, because I think that too can make it really fun and enticing for people once they start to eat with their hands and use their hands. And it's such a great connection to have with our food as well. So I think incorporating something like that, like it's, it's again, the basics, right? It's putting the fillings for either your bowl, your I have another one. I have another one. What about loaded potato? So yeah, you, that's nice. Yeah, all you have to do is just put, let's say, I don't know, you have a big family, ten. That's a huge sweet potatoes. <laughs> I know. Like maybe you have five people in a family and they will enjoy two potatoes. You have two 
two sweet potatoes for everybody. Anyways, you just put those baked or those sweet potatoes or normal potatoes if you prefer into the oven. And as they are baking, you're preparing all the other stuff, like chopping your vegetables. And you know, you can ask your kids or your, your spouse what they would like. And then once the, the potatoes are done, all you have to do is just load all the other stuff on top of it. And everybody's happy. Let them load it. Let them load it. Okay, <laughs> let's, move, let's on. move on. Tip number five. Plan ahead. So something we have seen tremendous, actually amazing results when it comes to any of our clients or our members of our coaching is when they start to do some meal prepping and they start to actually plan ahead. And I'm sure if you're listening to this and you've experienced it yourself, you realize how much of a load it can take off of you of being organized and really planning ahead and prepping your food and being prepared for those busy or even extra busy nights that you might have. So we always encourage either taking one day or two days even. So Sunday works great as well as Wednesday, again, midweek and prep some meals. I think it goes really well this tip for families, for moms who are the primary cooks in the family and you know your kid's schedule or you know, everybody's schedule in a family. If there is meetings throughout the week mm-hmm. or your kids have after school activities or you have some hobbies, planning ahead is huge because mm-hmm. what happens is if you get home and all of a sudden you are asked to cook three different meals for everybody, no wonder you're stressed and overwhelmed, right? So just sitting down, like Nick was saying, I think Sundays work really well for us because, and I think it works well for a lot of our clients as well, because it's a day where everybody kind of slows down a little bit. Even if you take like one or two hours and you just kind of look at your schedule and then write down what is going to be your meal plan for the upcoming week. And plan accordingly, like you said, to whatever, maybe if there's hockey games, practices, anything like that. And a couple tips here is to make dishes that would make great leftovers. So when you might have those nights where you are in a huge pinch and you need to just grab something, then you can take something out of the freezer and you can thaw it the night before, knowing that that next day is going to be extremely busy and you need something. So you're almost like stalking yourself for those days where you just didn't prepare or you didn't have enough and you need something quick. So thinking in that aspect as well as preparing extra. So if you're cooking rice, for instance, for a meal that's on Monday for a Buddha bowl or fajitas, like we were talking about, then create extra rice. And maybe on Tuesday night, then you're going to whip up a nice rice stir fry with a Mm -hmm. side salad or something. So start thinking this way that it's okay that if you're cooking rice, cook a bunch of it that you can use for two meals rather than just one meal. Um, we have a full article on our website, activevegetarian.com, that is a full step-by-step guide of meal prepping. And it's something to definitely take time and to check out and to come to understand and start to utilize this because it does make a big difference and it will ensure that you are making healthy, nourishing choices for yourself and for your family. And just being prepared and, and being able to have that time to actually sit and enjoy these meals with your family. I think a lot of people find it intimidating that they have to plan ahead, like mm-hmm. you know, planning for the full week ahead. The truth is that it will take less and less time as you go. So sure, at the beginning, it's going to be maybe a little bit of a struggle to try to plan your meals for every single day of the week. But like anything, it gets better with time. Mm-hmm. You, know, you will get better. You will get more skilled. You will get more skilled in the kitchen. You will have to, you will understand better how much you should be cooking to not end up with crazy leftovers or maybe cooking more so you have those leftovers. For and get those. more creative with those other exactly. dishes you can use it for yes honestly plant-based eating is pretty simple and um you can make it a little bit more complicated if you really need to for your meat eaters but i think everybody's food and meals should be kept fairly simple it it changes your life as Trust humans us. like to overcomplicate everything so it's okay we all do it it's <laughs> okay so tip number six is a fun one introduce meatless mondays Does your family already have a day in the week where you do not eat any meat? If not, now is the perfect time to start. You know, Meatless Mondays is something that started many years ago Mm -hmm. and it became very, very popular 
Of course, you don't have to do it on Mondays, but it's a catchy name, Meatless Monday. You can do it any time of the week. We suggest that if your family loves their animal protein, that you really start with dishes that are going to be pleasing mm-hmm. to them. So choose something that you're already, you know that your family already likes. Like the shepherd's pie, for instance. If it's a favorite of theirs, then show them that you can make it healthy and you can still make it taste good by making it fully plant-based. So what you would do instead of the ground beef, you would basically just make some lentils. And Mm -hmm. you can cook them the exact same way as you would do ground beef. And trust us, there is not much of a difference. If, If you really take the time and prepare it with love and care your family will really appreciate it. We speak from experience because we've tried and we've tested this on many of our family members when it comes to holidays or things like that. Obviously, we're preparing meals that we're going to want to eat and it can come down to a dish like this. And they are interested. They're trying it. And a lot of the time, the feedback is that. that it's Sometimes like, it's even more yeah. popular <laughs> than the meat dish on the table. True. You mentioned about making it gradual, and I think that's extremely important is to gradually start to introduce this into people's life and to use their favorite dishes. But the other thing is is that it doesn't have to just be Monday. Like you said, it can be any day of the week, but it can also be more than one day a week. So if you do find that the feedback is positive and it is showing that they want more of this, then introduce two nights a week. And just again, gradually start to bring more vegetable-based and more plant-based dishes into your home and, and see what happens. All right, so Meatless Mondays works well for, as Nikki was saying, something like shepherd's pie. That's everybody's favorite. Burgers. Mm -hmm. Come on. People love burgers. And today you can make burgers that are no meat burgers taste amazing. And we said make. So I know there's huge hype around the Beyond Meats and their burgers. But what Susanna is referencing here is making your own veggie burgers. Make your own. It's much better. And (laughs) honestly... The thing is that once you make them, you can make a lot of them Mm -hmm. and just freeze them. So that could be a really quick, uh, quick meal. And it could be a quick meal for you on those nights when you're maybe just making meal for your family that includes meat, meat. You have your burger in a freezer and you can just have it either on a bun or with a salad. It's a very quick meal. That's true. So burgers work well. What else? Um, Stuffed peppers, you know. People like those are normally stuffed with, like traditionally in my country, they're stuffed with lamb or ground beef. So you just stuff it again with lentils or ground up tempeh works really well. What else can I think of? Uh, Indian dishes work really well. If your family is open to ethnic food and who isn't who doesn't love good indian Mm -hmm. food or good thai food you can really play around with that because the spices and the flavors people will forget that there is no meat Mm -hmm. in there that's true all right i think it's time to move on so tip number seven stop obsessing about protein after years of research in our own personal experience we have found that we do not need as much protein in our diet as we are led to believe or that we hear or that we think. The average amount of protein that we need is about 42 grams per day. And most of us, vegans and vegetarians included, get way more, about 70% more than we actually need per day. So Please just trust and understand that if you are eating a variety of plant-based foods, if your family is eating a variety of plant-based foods, you can relax knowing that you are getting enough protein within your meals. And this can be something that you could research even a little bit further. So if the questions do come up and your family is inquiring why or where is their protein and why are they having that meat on the plate, like if you are in you know, Europe or somewhere like that, then research it and understand a little bit more and showcase and and know and explain like how much protein is actually in all of these plant-based sources. You know, I think education, like, uh, that's it's a huge. very good point. It's huge. It's huge. And he said, like, if you're in Europe, I like that <laughs> idea. Like, as Europeans, we all eat, we eat as meat and cheese. Well, we do uh, in certain countries in Europe. I don't know what kind of accent that was, but <laughs> we rely heavily on plant-based, uh, I mean, meat protein. But you know what? 
think about somebody like think about india you know mm. there's a big part of india where they do not eat any meat they're vegetarians I don't see them dying because they are deficient in protein. So I think that it's been proven that plant-based eating is just fine, that we really do not need as much protein as, as we were led to believe. But please, please remember that you will have to be eating whole plant-based foods. You cannot rely on processed foods or pre-packaged foods. It, the key is to eat whole ingredients. So of course, any type of vegetables, green vegetables are amazing, high protein, protein packed, I should say, uh, sources. Of course, nuts and seeds and whole grains. Um, what else can I think of? Uh, if you are into it, then I would definitely suggest trying things like spirulina and, you know, some superfoods as well to get your protein intake. But generally, rely on whole plant-based foods and you will be fine. And a variety of them. Variety. As long as you're getting a variety, then you're, you're good, you're set. Okay. okay, enough of the protein talk. Shall we move on? Let's move, Let's on. move on. Number eight. Number eight, it's actually number nine. No, it's number eight. It's number eight. I'm ahead of the game. It's number eight. Doesn't trust me. No. <laughs> it, okay, so number eight. I like this one. Be the change you want to see in others. I think that's super, super important. Because sometimes we are trying to really force our beliefs onto other mm-hmm. people by trying to convince them that that's the way to be. So I say... Instead, just be a shining example. So if you are into eating kale and um, meditating meditating and doing yoga in your living room and that makes you happy, just do it. Because if you are happy, the rest of the people around you are going to be much happier. Because if you are really suppressing Mm -hmm. what it is that you need, it's going to affect the people around you. And we said it at the beginning, nobody's an island. If um, there is, you know, negative energy or feelings that are burning inside of you, it's going to ripple and it's going to affect the people around you. And I think especially when you have a children, the way you think of food and the way you behave around food really has a huge effect on your kids. And so if you don't like healthy foods and you don't eat vegetables, and trust us, we've seen some vegans who actually do not like vegetables, your kids are going to mimic that. Mm-hmm. If you're like drinking a green smoothie in the, in the morning, it's like, ew, oh, it's gross. Or your partner says it, just be very mindful of it because your kids, even without trying it, they will have that um, response when it comes to They'll hear to, it and they'll yeah. pick up on that. And then when you ask them to try some green smoothie or even have some spinach, then they'll say, oh, no, because they will have that association. So I think definitely, yeah, being being aware of that and how you connect with food and think of food around your kids is important. What kind of relationship do you have mm-hmm. with food? Mm-hmm. Do you, a lot of people have very unhealthy relationship with food and now they are on diets all the time. Kids pick up on that. I know that we are getting a little bit uh, into psychology here once again, but I can tell you from my personal experience, somebody who was personally dealing with eating disorder, it's challenging. You do pick up on those hints from your parents and that carries on. So just be very mindful and have a very positive outlook on on food and, uh, you know, allow your kids to see it and talk about healthy food in a very positive way and honestly the best thing you can do you be the change and i don't think it even just stops at you know whatever it is that you're choosing to eat but it comes down to that with exercise and with every other positive and and good habit in your life to just allow your kids to see it and allow them to see how it can change so if you are exercising they want to be part of it try to incorporate them somehow show them and really allow them to express themselves with that too because it, again you are an idol to them and i think it's really important just to shine and to be a great example of you know all of these amazing benefits that they can start to include in their own lives too so be the change you want to see around number nine ask for help so speaking of kids a lot this is a great one if you do have children and that is even your spouse or your partner as well but we'll talk about kids first and that's to get them to help so whether it is with preparing or 
cooking the dish, obviously giving them tasks and chores that they can handle and that they can do depending on their age uh, or your partner, have them included, get them to prepare a meal with you. Great thing for, let's go with preschoolers first. If they're going shopping with you, allow them to pick out some new fruit or vegetable that they would want to have. And each time you go to the grocery store, encourage them to try to choose something different every single week. So then they are trying new fruits, they are trying new vegetables, and that way you can really have an understanding of what it is that they like and what they don't like. And you can choose things for them in the future that they do enjoy. I understand that that might not happen all the time (laughs) because, you know, like, uh, let's face it, we live in a busy society and to get your kids to help you with dinner while they maybe have to do their homework and such, it's probably not uh, feasible every single time. But make sure that you do it at least once a week. Mm-hmm. I remember working with a family and we had this fun um, fun game, similar to what you were already mentioning. So on the way to the grocery store, I said, okay, you guys pick a color, any color. And they would say, okay, yellow. And we say, okay, so we're going to go into the produce section in a grocery store and we're going to choose something that is yellow nice. and we are going to incorporate it into dinner. And they had fun with it and they were more apt to trying it. So maybe yellow peppers, you know, something that they maybe were not keen on in the, in, in the past, they felt actually willing to try it because it was their choice. Their choice and you make food fun, right? You're making it fun. And when you were talking about peppers, I remember with my nephew teaching him how to break the pepper and how it sprays. And he loved it. And then he's like wanting to eat them so he can break them and snap them in people's faces and spray them. So I think just when we, again, bring that good positive association with food and like even if it's a green smoothie, you know, Oh, it's a Hulk smoothie. You know, yeah. Hulk drinks this, and you just have it's to make get, you strong. Get so creative in these ways. Um, let's go back to some other ideas. So when we think about like early preschool kids, something you could do is have a chart on the fridge or something, and give them a sticker every time that they have a fruit or a vegetable, mm-hmm. and then maybe reward them with some fun family activity on the weekend that you could do. When it comes to your partner or your spouse, encourage them and give them a sticker too. Yeah, you could, yes, definitely. But get them in the kitchen, get them to help you if they're willing to, um, whether it's through the weeknights and you need a little extra hand because the kids are busy doing their homework, whatever, and you can you can do it through the weeknight or you can actually plan a date night. And something that you could do is choose a cookbook and together look through it and choose a dish that you want to prepare and take some time and prepare that meal together. Or a fun one that I really like is just grabbing a cookbook and guessing a page, saying, give me a page number and they call out 80 you open it to page 80 and it's like chocolate mousse and you're like cool chocolate mousse that's our dessert for date night now let's find an entree and just keep going by like page numbers and trying to put some menu together that way of course there's so many different plant-based cookbooks these days and some of the recipes you can go from totally simple cookbook to if you love spending time in the kitchen there's some really advanced Mm -hmm. plant-based books cookbooks now that they have elaborate recipes so you know you can be pretty creative I think that that's a really fun one to do. But warning, do choose to do this, whether it's with your kids or your partner, but find time on like a weekend to do it because you will probably take a little bit longer in the kitchen and I'm sure that it's going to be a lot messier and the cleanup might be a little longer as well. So that's just a tip. But honestly, Nick, I like what better way to connect Mm -hmm. than with food, right? Everybody like we said it, we said it at like tip number one, everybody loves eating, you know, like food is something that we find a connection uh, connection with. with. So let's try to create a positive connection and I think the the way we prepare food it, it makes a huge difference mm-hmm. too. You know, some people are not really great cooks per se, but just because they put so much love into making the dish, it makes a huge difference. So if you can get your family on board, you're definitely going to connect with uh, the food in much healthier way. And I think also your spouse or your children might appreciate. Actually, the amount of work that actually goes into preparing That's a That's a good point, yes. Mm-hmm. All, All right, right. number 10. One last one, and it's to not give up. Do not give up. Do not give up on it. We stress it over and over. If it's really important to you and you want to become healthier and plant-based lifestyle is 
your choice, which it should be because it's wonderful. Um, don't give up on it. Just because mm-hmm. your family might not be on board yet, it might change. Uh, I said it before, I was married for 10 years and after eight years, this guy suddenly decided, okay, I'm going to try to be a vegan. And he was a tough cookie to break, let me tell you. And he tried it and, you know, he did really well with it. So I think don't give up. Don't give up on your spouses. And most importantly, don't give up on yourself. And don't try to change anybody else. That's just it. It's like, don't even try to change yourself for others. Just be who you are and stay true to that, like you were saying, and do what you need to do for yourself. And you can still take care of other people, but just understand that if you are not resisting these things that you want to do for yourself, whether it is nourishing yourself with plant-based foods or exercising, meditating, yoga in the living room, whatever it might be, when you can take care of yourself in these areas then you're able to take care of everybody else around you, whether it is your partner or your family. So know it's not selfish and just know that you you need to do that. You need to take care of you so you can take care of others. Consistency is the key, however. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if you really make that decision, stay true to it because there is nothing worse. There's probably worse things, but you'll get my point when I say it. If one day you decide, okay, I am uh, eating fries and I'm eating the hamburger, I don't know why that's like the traditional thing. Pizza with pepperoni and the next day your family is having it and you're having a kale salad and you're like, ew, I can't believe you guys are eating it. It's so unhealthy. It's really not good for you. There's no consistency. People won't take you seriously. They're just going to be confused and they're going to be like a little frustrated with you. So just be consistent. Be consistent every single day. Yes, however, remember that there is also time for treat. You know, we have to be able to be open and we have to allow our family to really have what it is that they need to fulfill their needs because remember, it's an individual journey and everybody um, will make those changes when the time is right for them. Or even depending on where you're at on this journey, if one day you do have the pepperoni pizza with your family, just have the pizza. Just don't judge yourself or judge others when they're eating it and maybe you choose not to eat it at that time again we are all on a different part of this path and just understanding that like you know one day if you decide like i'm not eating pizza anymore and your family still is let them do that and just don't judge them don't try to change them and you do what you need to do Especially, you know, even if they are picking on you and commenting on the food that you might be eating, just don't do it back. Mm -hmm. Good point, Nikki. Good, good point. Now, we covered a lot of information on today's episode, as always. So we have for you the entire article. There is recipe ideas. There is substitution ideas. So I think if you enjoyed this episode where you're listening or you're watching, you will definitely enjoy the full article because you're going to get more information out of it. And it's good to come back to it because Mm -hmm. just hearing it once is usually not enough. So feel free to go on our website, Active Vegetarian. Com. This is episode 75 and you will find all the notes there. And one last little thing, if you do need some support, some help with any of the things that we have talked about, even with just trying to kickstart and get that consistency in your life, please do check out our AV coaching. We offer two weeks free to start out to give it a try and see if it's something for you. And we hope even in those two weeks, you would see some valuable changes and you could continue with us if that's what you want. And it's, it's a journey. So we would love to support you if you need that help. All right. Thank you very much for watching, for listening, and we'll see you soon.